you have to analyse your own work, then they have to analyse your work. Then you have to talk about it. No, hated it. Right. So, I filmed a fibro section about my counselling experience, okay, over the years. It took me probably a little while to film, half an hour or so, and guess who's deleted it? Me. So... This is Tuesday before it has to go up tomorrow and Wednesday, which for me is cutting it quite fine because I obviously have to edit it yet. And I've made myself a little cup of tea. And let's get going because I haven't got time. I've literally got 20 minutes before I've got to be somewhere. Counselling experience. This probably isn't going to be as long a video as it was before, but that might be a good thing. Who knows? So when I was younger, my first experience of counselling was when I, my dad left home and to cut a long story short, I found it very difficult to process and my mum sent me to counselling. It was to, um, uh, I can't remember, it was like in town somewhere in a town hall or something like that I don't know it's in offices and it was this man called Peter I'll never forget who sat there with his little notepad like this and stared at me for the whole time waiting for me to say something so he could make a note now as a child for me that's off-putting but even as an adult, I wouldn't want that now either. So I don't know what sort of counselling that was, but I didn't like it. And the only reason I went was because my mum promised me a bag of chips on the way home. Oh, come on, you know, chips, bag of chips, who's going to say no? So I went. <laughs> and then going on from that, they put me into like what they called group therapy, where you sat in a circle with other adolescents that had issues and we were all supposed to talk about our issues together. That didn't really work either. But anyway, went along with that. That was the first type of counselling experience I had. Then, fast forward on, and when I had both the girls, I had bad postnatal depression after having each one of them, like each of the girls. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the two babies I lost, or if that's just got to do with my hormones, I don't know. But I had bad postnatal depression. With Holly, I was on antidepressants, I believe, and it passed, I came off of them, and that was that. With Poppy, it was a bit different. Nothing that is Poppy's fault, it's just circumstances, I think, at the time. Poppy was a difficult baby, again that's not her fault and I will reiterate that. So she was hard work which didn't help things and it just, the antidepressants weren't working and the doctor suggested that I went to counselling. So she sent me for cognitive behavioural therapy. I think at that point it was because of the two miscarriages I'd had, it was all sort of not being processed properly in my brain so I went for this cognitive behavioural therapy everything is basically turning a negative into a positive when you're in a negative frame of mind you don't want to think positively and everything was no nope, don't want to be positive no nope. <laughs> I just I didn't want to know I really didn't want to know but how she got me over that I don't know, obviously that's their job and that's what they're trained to do but she did get me over it and by the end of it I could turn one negative thing into ten positive things and that's quite hard, if you try and do that that's quite hard to do but that, that cognitive behavioural therapy that has helped me through my whole life 
So I would say, if you're in any doubt of what sort of calcium to have, go for that one first anyway. So had that, then fast forward on to when I became ill in 2016 with fibro and ME. And I think it was not until about 2017 that we had counselling because I sent the girls for counselling because obviously they found it very difficult to come to terms with the fact that their mum has got poorly and she's not going to get better so that is quite a hard thing for children to, to comprehend um, and to process so we went to somewhere called Kids Inspire and they wanted to see me as well and my reaction was don't break my shell don't break my shell I have managed to create this shell of don't hammer it don't come in just stay away and she was like no don't worry I won't break your shell you know we'll just go through things anyway I was there for a year with this one specific counsellor who was brilliant and I will quite honestly say she saved my life because if it hadn't been for her I don't think I'd have been here. I think I was at the point of thinking, what good is my life now? I'm feeling ill, like I've got flu every single day of my life. I have no energy. All I have is pain. How can I live a good life? I couldn't see it. I couldn't see past it. I couldn't see what was going on. So without her, I don't think I'd be here. And the girls, I think, are fully aware of that. So I can quite easily say that to you and know if they're watching this, they know that I'm over that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I had that and that was more like trauma counselling. So she was taking me through, I've had a lot of traumas in my time. I'm not going to go through them all, but I have had a lot of traumas and it was going through each one and processing it, which means it's still going to be there. You've still had that trauma, but it's being processed in a different way. Therefore, it's not impacting your body, causing more pain had that so yeah I was there for about a year and then I merrily carried on on my own and then I don't know when it was when I contacted it must have been 2019 and yes because I contacted them and I started seeing them I think in June so I contacted Kids Inspire again because the lady that saw me was the head of Kids Inspire so I emailed her and said look I'm really struggling I don't know what it was, it was just that I was finding everything was upsetting me and I was having bad thoughts again and anyway, she said that to come in and she'd see me and I literally just sat there and cried. I just cried and she said that she wanted me to see a different counsellor and I, she wanted me to do art therapy because she thought I was quite creative. She thought art therapy would be a good way to go. So tried it hated it I mean you have to do a picture right of something that's in in your head anything that comes out I did pictures of leaves I think then you have to analyze your own work then they have to analyze your work then you have to talk about no hated it so I went once and the next time I went I said I, I really I felt uncomfortable I didn't like it so we just talked we talked and she's the trouble is she said I'm what you call a bliss bunny so I only like to talk about things that are good and happy things not bad negative unhappy things it was it took a while for anything to come out and then when they did come out I obviously got very upset by it and there's still more that I haven't talked about I have finished my counselling with her now it finished a few weeks ago I feel okay about that I wasn't okay about that when it first came around but now I feel fine because I know it's not never that I'm having never having counselling again it's just that at the moment I can cope without it but she is interested she did say because I said there's a few things that obviously we we were talking about but we hadn't gone into depth over it because it hadn't come up for one reason or another so that's something maybe we can approach in the future 
but yeah the art therapy wasn't for me it might be for some people but it just wasn't for me so yeah then it was more back to the trauma counselling really and just talking and she tried to make me see things in different ways she tried to make me see pain in different ways some of what she said I hadn't got a clue what she was talking about I'm going to put my hands up to that other things she said I sort of thought oh yeah yeah she's right thinking about it that way so the counselling that I've had oh my foot's really hurting sorry the counselling that I've had in my past I think has been invaluable now when people say if you've got something that's bothering you or you're finding it hard to cope you need to talk it's very true and I'm not saying everyone jumping off, off and go to counselling I'm saying talk talk to your friends talk to your partner talk to your relatives whoever you feel you're able to talk to talk to them I find people on Twitter really good for things that are fibro related they're really helpful to me but Mark is my best friend and I will literally tell him everything there's nothing that he doesn't know about me and if I'm in pain I tell him if there's something bothering me I tell him and the same goes with him I hope to me I hope he tells me everything I'm sure he does therefore he is my outlet but I do also have very good friends as you've seen on these vlogs so I talk to them too so it's not all about counselling counselling can come from other people it doesn't have to just come from a counsellor but if you do watch this and you do think I really feel like I need some counselling go to your GP that's the first port of call they can then put you in touch with different there might be someone on the NHS that you can see that you don't have to pay for Love, luckily touch wood I have never had to pay for my counselling I've been very fortunate it's all been on the NHS or it's been funded by the Kids Inspire they accept funding from outside like lottery have given them the money and certain people they do we've done raised loads of money for Kids Inspire so there are a lot of places out there that you can contact um, and if you are a bit like I don't know where to start go and see a GP because they'll be able to help you and if they can't go to see another one because you've got to have a good GP really you have you've got to have someone that's going to listen but anyway that's my counselling story take two as I deleted the first one I'm going to now go and drink my cup of tea hope you've enjoyed my little story have you had counselling before if you have what type have you had let me know in the comments below hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done already and I will see you all I'm going to put my tea down for this <laughs> on Saturday for the weekly and now I'm going to go and edit this and I hope I don't delete it cheerio